Welcome to the White House. It is wonderful to have you all here. You've got snow, you've got Christmas. It's the best time of year, so welcome. I am so pleased that all of you could join us today as we award the 2010 National Medals for Museum and Library Service to 10 outstanding libraries and museums from across the country. I want to start by acknowledging the members of Congress who are here with us today. Uh, I want to thank all of you for taking the time to join us during a very busy time of the year, but this is an important uh, occasion and we wanted to make sure that everyone could be a part of it. I particularly want to recognize our guest of honor today, uh, this year's medal winners for your tremendous contributions to our communities. Now, uh, from the looks of things, you all are a pretty diverse bunch. Uh, you come from every corner of the country, uh, from big cities and from small towns, and your programming involves everything from puppetry and gardening uh, to Civil War battles and science experiments. But you're here today because you all share the same commitment to excellence, the same determination to serve your communities, and the same spirit of innovation. You're here because you've challenged the conventional notions of what a library or a museum can and should be, pushing the boundaries of what's possible, uh, embracing new ideas and approaches. Uh, at Connor Prairie Interactive History Park, for example, uh, guests don't just view his historical reenactments, they actually become part of them. On one visit, they might be pioneers living on the prairie in the early 1800s. On the next visit, they might be fug fugitive slaves risking their lives for a chance at freedom. At Patchog Medford Library, which serves a large Hispanic population, they have a language cafe where English-speaking and Spanish-speaking teenagers can meet to practice their language skills with one another. And the Rangeview Library District hasn't just gotten rid of the Dewey Decimal System, they've actually eliminated overdue fines. Uh, <laughs> And I understand they've even made t-shirts that read, shh, is a four-letter word. <laughs> and you all don't just think in different ways, you actually think in very big ways. Your work has uh, never just been limited to the four walls of your institutions. Instead, you bring what you have to offer to as many people as possible, reaching out to underserved populations, finding creative ways to stretch your resources as far as they can go. Uh, the Nashville Public Library has opened up their collection to high schools across the city. So today, students can get online, check out a book, and have it delivered right to their own school library. At Explora, uh, they don't just bring kids to the museum, they bring the museums to the kids creating more than 200 science education programs that travel to every county in the state. And the Japanese American National Museum hosted a conference that brought together folks from all across the country to discuss topics ranging from diversity to civil liberties to social justice. But while some of your work may be national in scope, ultimately your most powerful impact is local. Each of you is an integral part of your community. Each of you strives every day to meet the needs of the people who walk through your doors. And that's particularly true in times of challenge and crisis, uh, when many of you offer vital services, stepping up to be there for folks when they need you the most. For example, the New York Botanical Garden started the Bronx Green Up Revitalization Program and they help plant hundreds of school and community gardens in struggling neighborhoods so that families could grow their own fresh produce. When the West Bloomfield Township uh, was hard hit by the economic downturn, the West Bloomfield Township Public Library sponsored job workshops and computer trainings to get folks back on their feet. When Hurricane Katrina struck and many people were displaced to Jackson, Mississippi, the Mississippi Museum of Art helped start a program called Life Shards. Uh, and for four months, families worked with an art therapist to create artworks out of actual debris from the storm. 
And the Peter White Public Library recently hosted a series of events to educate the community about mental health and mental illness. I think their director, Pam Christensen, put it best when she said, there are so many stories here, and, and they're not all on the shelves. Uh, and I can imagine that all of you here today, all of you honorees, would probably agree with that sentiment. Uh, because you know that what you do each day isn't just about the books on your shelves or the items in your exhibits. It's about the people who walk through your doors. And that also happens to be how my husband and, and I view our time here at the White House. Uh, because while our family has the pleasure of living here, uh, we know that we're really just guests. Um, this is really the people's house. We say that all the time. And it's also in its own way a museum. Uh, and as I told a group of children that I was visiting with earlier this week, my husband is the 44th president, uh, which means that dozens of other presidents and, and their families have lived here. Uh, and each of them has created their own memories and made their own history uh, right under this roof. And we are determined to share that proud heritage with as many people as possible, particularly our young people, uh, because we want them to not just experience this legacy, but to feel a part of this legacy. That is so important for our kids. We want them to know that they have a place in our museums, in our libraries, in our cultural centers, and most importantly, in the walls of this very house, uh, the White House. And I know that's what all of you strive for as well. Uh, and that's your mission. And that's why I am very proud to be here today to honor you all for the work that you do. So uh, I want to thank you. Uh, we are very, very delighted to have you here. Uh, we're excited about the work that you do every day. And I want to congratulate you all on some truly magnificent achievements. And I look forward to all that you'll continue to do to do in the, the years of, ahead. So now we can get to the business of giving out some awards, taking some pictures, <laughs> seeing the press, and then you can get out of here and see the rest of the house. Uh, so with that, it's my pleasure to turn things over to Mary Chute from the Institute of Museum and Library Services who will introduce today's honorees. So thank you all. Thank you so much, Mrs. Obama. Well, ready to get to the winners here. Our first award, Connor Prairie Interactive History Park, Fishers, Indiana. President and CEO, Ellen Rosenthal, and community member, Randy French, are accepting the National Medal for Connor Prairie Interactive History Park in Fishers, Indiana. Connor Prairie is an outdoor living history museum, renowned for its innovative approach to learning, Randy French learned to read as an adult through the literacy program, Indie Reads, which then partnered with Connor Prairie to engage students in museum trips. Now Randy plans the outings and says that literacy includes being an active community member. And next we have Explora. Albuquerque, New Mexico. Executive Director Dr. Patrick Lopez and community member Sarah Keeney are accepting the National Medal for Explora Science Center and Children's Museum in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Explora offers the Albuquerque community more than 550 inquiry-based programs and exhibits that encourage critical thinking and foster lifelong science learning. As the principal of the Los Padilla elementary school, Sarah has found fresh approaches for engaging teachers, students, and their parents by using the museum's programs. <laughs> <laughs> the Japanese American National Museum in Los Angeles, California. Akemi Kikamura Yano, president and CEO, and community member, Paul Takamoto, are accepting the National Medal for the Japanese American National Museum in Los Angeles, California. The museum explores American history through the lens of Japanese American experiences. 
emphasizing the importance of understanding and appreciating all American diversity. In 2004, Paul accompanied his mother on a museum trip to visit a World War II campsite where she had been incarcerated. This began a transformative healing process for his family and for Paul, <laughs> a new understanding of his Japanese American heritage. The Mississippi Museum of Art in Jackson, Mississippi. Director Betsy Bradley and community member Gwendolyn McGee are accepting the National Medal for the Mississippi Museum of Art in Jackson. The museum embraces its Mississippi roots in all programming, grounded in a sense of place that contributes to the understanding of the cultural identity of the state and its people. Gwen is a textile artist who says she has benefited from the staff's commitment and dedication to regional artists and she has garnered numerous awards at the local, regional, national, and international levels. <laughs> Nashville Public Library, Nashville, Tennessee. Director Donna Nicely and community member Nancy McClellan are accepting the National Medal for the Nashville Public Library in Nashville, Tennessee. The library is a leader in efforts to continually improve and enrich the city through outreach and public programming that is educational and fun. Nancy embraces the library program's whole child approach to learning and uses the new methods to impact the lives of her students and families, many of whom are at risk. The New York Botanical Garden, New York, New York. President and CEO Gregory Long and community member Karen Washington are accepting the National Medal for the New York Botanical Garden. The garden advocates for the plant kingdom and strengthens the community by presenting programs, events, exhibitions, and classes that emphasize the importance of environmental conservation, healthy living, and education. Karen has been a community activist since 1985 speaking out for garden protection and preservation, and working to turn empty lots in the Bronx into community gardens. <laughs> Patchogue Medford Library, Patchogue, New York. Director Dina McNeese Krills and community member Zini Velasquez are accepting the National Medal for the Patchogue Medford Library in Patchogue, New York. Throughout years of change and growth, the library has remained focused on its ultimate goal of basic literacy since its start in the 1880s in a side room of a shoe store. Zini immigrated to the United States from Ecuador in 1991 and credits the library's Spanish section for helping her become proficient in English, work professionally, and become a citizen. Her dreams came true starting at the library. The Peter White Public Library in Marquette, Michigan. Director Pam Christensen and community member Jane Ryan are accepting the National Medal on behalf of the Peter White Public Library in Marquette, Michigan. The library is a learning hub for Marquette's residents and provides programs to promote acceptance and engage people from all walks of life. Jane advocates for people with mental illnesses and worked with the staff to develop three months of award-winning program on mental health issues. The Rangeview Library District and AnyThink Libraries in Adams County, Colorado. Director Pam Sanlian and community member Donna Kelly will accept the National Medal for Rangeview Library District and AnyThink Libraries in Adams County. The libraries revamped their library services in 2009, switching from Dewey Decimal to a system based on words, which has been well received by the community. Donna and her family are passionate library patrons who are particularly grateful that their nine-year-old son overcame difficulty reading at a library program by reading to a dog. <laughs> Thank you. 
And our last award to West Bloomfield Township Public Library in West Bloomfield Township, Michigan. Director Clara Nall Borer and community member Cameron Thomas Shaw will accept the National Medal for West Bloomfield Township Public Library in Michigan. Once a small library in the Detroit suburbs, the library has grown to meet the needs of a culturally diverse community. No matter the changes, the library's most important partnership is still with parents. A former latchkey kid himself, and now a senior at Morehouse College in Atlanta, Cameron attributes his educational and personal success to the second home that he found at the library. Well, you all survived it. <laughs> you, you looked at the right photographer. Not that you all are the wrong photographers. Uh, so now it's time to enjoy. Uh, so uh, with that, I will bid you all a happy holidays on behalf of myself, my husband, Malia, Sasha, Grandma, and Bo. <laughs> uh, make sure that you are safe. You keep working hard because we're going to need you next year to keep doing what you're doing. So. Now all you have to do is enjoy the house. We've got a wonderful reception. Look around, touch, feel, enjoy. Uh, you've earned it. So thank you all so much. Take care.